And this generation does not intend to founder in the backwash of the coming age of space. We mean to be a part of it. We mean to lead it. He said because it is there. Well, space is there. Hello everyone, welcome to the newest episode of That Space Show. We're going to be covering the dates April 24th, which was Wednesday, and April 26th, which is today, Friday. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because we're releasing content three days a week. And I mean, it's free to do so. So if you're interested in space and learning about all the current events that's going on, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I mean, it's free and hit that bell so you get notified when I post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So... Without further ado, I'm going to talk about some of the implements I'll be having. So, first we're going to have our stabilizer. I mean, I had some complaints about the shaky camera, which I understand. I mean, I'm on a webcam, and the monitor's a little shaky because it's pretty big, but I put a, a weight, I mean, a dumbbell on my monitor, so hopefully that helps a little bit, and I'll try not to, like, knock the decks, but whatever. And then I want to implement a quick guide, actually, which the quick guide will be, like, a reference point for all of the vocab terms such as like neutron stars and all that which i think i'll try and implement over this weekend and i'll have it out by monday and i'll be adding it to it so be on the lookout for that because i think it'll make listening to these videos and understanding them so much better so without further ado let's take a look at our comments and now i like to shout out these people for leaving comments on the latest video Missy Lou, thank you for your comment. Arthur Simone, YK9NU, thank you for your comment. Michael Norris, 3628, thank you for yours. Blunt Razor, thank you so much for your suggestion. And underscore Little Marty, thank you so much for your comment as well. And shout out to all the people who have to comment. I mean, if you want to be featured in the comment section, then go ahead and post me a nice comment or something. I'll put you in. And now also our public subscribers who recently subscribed from last video. If you want to have a chance, well, I mean, you probably are going to be in it, but if you have your public subscriptions on, I'm going to be shouting you out in this segment. So shout out to our new subscribers, Israel Diego Rivera and Curtis Rudick. Thank you so much for subscribing. And if you're interested in being in the video like them, go ahead and hit that subscription and hit that notification bell so you get notified when we're posting. And now let's get into the actual episode, Astronomy. The moon's going to be at Apelion, and then lunar oculation of Enteric. And then launches, we had the Long March 2FG, Shinzu 18, which I'll show you on a video. And then we had the Falcon 9 Block 5, Galileo FOC, FM 25, FM 27, which is going to be Saturday, April 27th at 8.34 p.m. Eastern Time Zone. Then the Falcon 9 Block 5, Starlink Group 6 through 54. That's going to be Sunday, April 28th at 5.50 p.m. Eastern Time Zone. And then we have some launches that we don't know, like, when exactly is going to occur. Sometime in April, which is the Falcon 9 Block 5, Roadview Legion 1 and 2, the Minotaur 4, NRL 174. And then the Spaceship 2, which I believe is from Virgin Galactic, NES Galactic-07. And then the Falcon 9 Block 5, Starlink Group 8 through 2. And then we have the new Shepard NS-25. And without further ado, let's get straight into... Everyone, welcome to Astrobiology and Astrophysics. Now, we got some good stories, I think. A lot of black hole stories, actually. So let's get straight into it. And now, European astronomers recently discovered a new black hole named Gaia BH3 in its connection to a nearby disrupted star cluster named ED2. Gaia BH3 is the most massive black hole of stellar origin in our galaxy. With a mass of, of course, 33 times the sun, it orbits in a binary system with a giant star. ED2, now a galactic halo stellar stream, was once an old star cluster. Now, what is a halo stellar stream? It's basically a group of stars that move together in a similar path through the galaxy's halo, which of course is the spherical region surrounding the main disk of the galaxy. A group of astronomers decided to study the composition of BH3 and ED2, and they could do this by seeing the wavelengths of these two, of the stream and the black hole. 
But they found that they have very similar composition and makeup, which tells them that they might have formed in the same stellar environment or shared common evolutionary pathways. This connection, of course, provides valuable insights into the early stages of black holes and star cluster formation in our galaxy. So, very cool discovery and not the only black hole story we have today. Now, recently the James Webb T Space Telescope, of course, suggests that supermassive black holes can actually swiftly stop star formations in big galaxies by blasting out huge amounts of gas. In a recent study by Dr. Becca da Daves, researchers found that more than 90% of gas pushed out by black holes is actually neutrally charged, and this is the first direct proof that black holes can actually shut down galaxies. When star formation stops, it's called quenching. Scientists are unsure what causes the shutdown, though, and Dr. Davies found that supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies can push out so much gas that it stops new far stars from actually forming. This neutral gas that is pushed out can flow a hundred times faster than ionized gas. Now, of course, this is previously invisible with all the ionized gas, but now they can actually see all this neutral gas being pushed out of that black hole. And it means they can learn so much more about how galaxies form and how black holes can disrupt them, especially those star-forming regions. And now, finally, story of the day, or what I think you guys would find the most interesting. Now, the European Space Agency's Mars Express has spotted a strange pattern called spiders in the southern polar area of Mars. Now, these aren't actual spiders, but... Dark marks formed by sunlight hitting layers of carbon dioxide built up during the winter. When sunlight melts the carbon dioxide, ice, gas escapes and carries that dark dust up, cracking through the ice above. This then creates tall fountains of gas and dark material on the surface, forming spots up to one kilometer wide. Now, the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter also captured these patterns clearly. The spiders are seen in a near place named the Inca City, of course named for its geometric ridges like the Inca ruins. The origin of Inca City is still a mystery, but it might be related to sand dunes turning into stone or magma seeping through fractured rock sheets. Mars Express has been exploring Mars for over two whole decades, revealing its surface, materi minerals, materials, atmosphere, and environment, giving us Truly a better understanding of Mars. And on to the Welcome to Space Discoveries, and we got some pretty good stories, I feel like at least. And now, guess what? A white streak recently found in a galaxy photo taken by Hubble was not at all an error. Rather, the discovery of a new asteroid. Recently, citizen scientists found over 1,000 unknown asteroids in old Hubble images. These asteroids, which are less than a kilometer wide, will help us better understand the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, and its true population of that belt. Now, this population could be over a million, and these new found asteroids are most likely due to all these collisions happening. By using long exposure, they are able to spot asteroids which at first appeared like cosmic raylight or satellites. but over 10,000 volunteers got together to identify what were exactly 1,701 of those asteroids were identified, and 1,031 were unknown. But also, 45 of them could have been comets. So we're going to be releasing, hopefully they'll release more information, because that's very cool. NASA Chandra releases time-lapse movies of the Crab Nebula and Cassiopeia A. Now... There is two movies that have been released from the Chanda X-ray Observatory, and it's releasing two time-lapse movies, of course, of the Crab Nebula and Cassiopeia A. These show now the aftermath of explosions that actually occurred centuries ago. The Crab Nebula was born from an ancient nebula, which contains a neutron star, of course, which is a tightly packed star that contains neutrons at the core. And this pulsar star, which pulsar stars are basically classified if a neutron spins fast enough to be classified. And this pulsar star spins at 30 times a second. It shoots X-ray radiation towards Earth. Now, Cassiopeia A is the remnants of a supernova that happened only 340 years ago to us. This movie captures the blast 
waves of the explosions in a time lapse. Now, this amazing movie shows us just how cool the universe can be and shows us how the process of shaping it actually works. And I'll put the links to that article, so check out those movies. I think they were very cool, in my opinion. And next, we have astronomers recently think that they have found a rare huge burst of energy from a super magnetic dead star named Magnetar. Now, magnetars, of course, if we discussed before, are types of neutron stars, and magnetars just have a very strong magnetic field, which can cause burst energy called flares. This burst was so bright that it lit up the entire galaxy. This was the first time we've actually seen gamma rays from a recently dead neutron star outside the Milky Way. Now, the Integral Science Data Center in Geneva noticed this burst and found it came from Messier 82, which is most commonly known as the Cigar Galaxy. They wanted to figure out if this burst was really from this rare type of flare, so they decided to check the afterglows and the x-rays in visible light and saw this was no typical burst. This was due to how bright it was and how strong that magnetic field was being sensed to be how strong it was. And studying these rare flares are going to help us understand how often these flares occur and the makeup of why they happen and how they influence all these pulsar stars and magnetars. And let's go on to... Welcome to Space Tech. Let's get straight into it. Now, NASA has made a new powerful engine for a small spacecraft, which could honestly change the way we explore other planets. This engine is actually so good that they plan on using it in satellites to keep them up longer. Now, this engine named NASA H-71M is perfect for a small spacecraft as it can leave a planet's orbit and move into another, which is, of course, called orbital slingshotting. This engine is important as it lets us do things from being in high orbit of Mars at a much cheaper cost than usual since it can move from the uh, low Earth orbit to the moon. Also, it can slow down the spacecraft while it may be a bit expensive for most companies, it looks like this engine will most likely be used for satellite and keeping them alive. And then our last one, space tech is sometimes hard to find, so let's get straight into it. And now, of course, the 1960s was the first time we ever saw the moon's surface up close, and while we learned a lot already, there's still honestly more to learn. Scientists are now studying lunar lobate scarps, which are long curved landforms caused by the moon's surface pushing together. These tell us how the moon is changing over time, and by looking at the craters, scientists can tell how old they are. Dr. Jason Clark from the University of Maryland actually says that, unlike Earth, the moon doesn't have things like moving plates, so figuring out why these scarps form is so important. It seems like as the moon cools down inside, it shrinks a bit, causing these sharp scarps. It seems like they found that most moonquakes occur near the surface, but the weak gravity of the moon means there's so much worse. Understanding these scarps helps us understand how the moon changes over time, and it teaches us how much more we can actually know about the moon. I mean, I thought we knew everything, but there's always something new to learn. On to... Space Exploration. Now... China is now ready to send its new crew to its own private space station. On Thursday, of course, as a part of their mission to put people on the moon in 2030. And now actually, this was a part of the Shinzu 18, which I think I should have a video up. And this new crew, which is three members, three members strong, will replace the current team actually. China decided to build its own base station after being excluded from the International Space Station. This year, the station is scheduled for two cargo spacecraft missions and two manned spaceflight missions. Commander Yi Gangfu, along with astronauts Li Kong and Li Gangsu, who will be going to space for the first time, they will actually spend six months in space conducting experiments and more. China is actually working to invite foreign astronauts and space tourists to visit the space station they've created. This will definitely boost China in their exploration wonders. And now NASA's Perseverance rover is currently, of course, exploring Mars and looking for signs of past life. And now this is the priority mission of Perseverance to look for signs of past life. It is still exploring the Jezero Crater. 
Now, it was chosen because it contains ancient muds and sediments from a river that actually flowed 3 billion years ago. They hoped that Perseverance might be able to find some microbial colonies which could be on the shorelines and these fossils could be visible and might contain chemical evidence for life. Then, once they find these, if they do end up finding them, they'll take them back to be studied. And another prime area that could be explored is the Gamma Geyser, geyser which is rich in carbonate minerals and silica, indicating conditions suitable for life. However, of course, if these are actually ever found, it's going to be a little bit tough to return as, I mean, they're in a little bit of a money issue, but Perseverance, nonetheless, disregarding money, will continue to search for these fossils. And then our final one is going to be on Japan's Moonlander. And now, Japan's first Moonlander, of course, which I think we mentioned actually on the first episode, named Slim, has braved its third lunar night, surviving extreme temperatures on the moon's surface. Now, the Japan Space Agency received an image from the probe three months after it landed on the moon. Now, during a lunar night, of course, the temperatures can plummet to minus 274 degrees Fahrenheit and negative 170 Celsius for you people out there. During the day, it could be 212 Fahrenheit. Now, SLIM touched down on January 20th, marking Japan as the fifth ever country to successfully get a moon landing, of course. Now, initially, SLIM landed upside down, which hindered its solar panel abilities to receive sunlight to work, but However, after being powered off for hours, it resumed operation when the sun rose eight days later. Now, designed to test Japan's landing technology and gather geological data and images, SLIM wasn't built to endure lunar nights. Despite this, Japan actually reported that SLIM's critical functions are still operational despite the harsh temperature cycles. Very cool, and that's gonna wrap. <laughs> And welcome to the outro and I'd like to thank everyone for watching the episode and before I leave I'd like to show you what I selected as photo of the day and in this photo we're gonna have actually a quadruple solar flare of the Sun which this is a very cool discovery I mean it hasn't hit us yet and I'm sure there's gonna be a story on the effects of what this quadruple solar flare is gonna be like but this was a very cool photo nonetheless and if you made it this far and haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because, I mean, I think you're interested in some space news, aren't you? But, of course, we're going to be uploading Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. And remember, be bold. Be original. Be invincible.